In this video on the income statements, we are going to now discuss uh, a little bit about how income statements look different for services firms. So far, we have looked at primarily the manufacturing set of firms and discussed the statements with respect to them. Let's just take an example of a couple of services firms. We'll look at an IT firm, we'll look at a bank to understand how the financial statements look slightly different for them. Right. And uh, obviously, because of that, uh, the analysis changes a little bit when you look at services firms. There are some nuances which are higher. For example, services firms will typically not have any raw material cost or in case they have, that will be very little as a component. What would be the biggest uh, cost for a services firm? You would typically find services firm have a lot of employees because that's what they are. Uh, they are basically basing their service on. So primarily employee cost becomes the biggest component of cost whenever you are looking at a services firm in terms of your uh, analysis, right? So there are going to be some line items which are different when we look at income statements of services firms. For example, there is no raw material cost usually. Primary cost becomes employee cost. Excise duty also gets removed. Remember excise duty was the duty you were paying on manufacturing essentially. So that gets returned as well, removed as well from the income statements. So anything that is to do with the manufacturing goes away and services comes in. In fact, typically while companies may or may not report it, here they should be seeing a service tax component that comes in, right? So that's what's uh, the deal with service firms. Now let's look at uh, a company like Infosys and quickly look at uh, what the statement looks like. So typically we have income from software services and products. So these are whatever the services, whatever services they have come from those services. Other income, the definition of other income stays the same. Total revenue is A plus B. Uh, in expenses, you will find that out of total expenses of about 39,000 crore, the biggest expense is employee expense, right? Then you have some other uh, other expenses that come in, which is again, you'll see the headers will be slightly different other than your depreciation and amortization expense. You see the headers are travel expenses, cost of technical subcontractors. Um, we'll look at the bigger ones only, the major ones, other expenses, and then cost of software packages. So everything specific to the in information technology industry, IT industry, right? That's what uh, that's what comes here. And then they have uh, the profit before business and then they have the tax and then the earnings per share. So everything else is exactly the same or similar as the earlier cases, just that the headers are different. One of the key differences is that employee cost is higher right and you do not have no you do not have excise duty right and typically some of the other headers are also different they're more oriented towards service firms right uh, eps calculation rest of the definitions remain similar in certain kind of services firms the definition of operating profit etc get different Right. In this case, it is simple. You can consider EBITDA or EBITDA as the operating profit. But in certain other cases, you will realize that uh, those definitions may not exactly hold. Right. What would those uh, areas be? Let's take the income statement, for example, for a bank. Now, how does a bank make money? The bank basically takes deposits. And on these deposits, it pays interest right on the other hand it extends loans and on these loans it gets interest right so primary income is interest income primary expense will be interest expense so that's your interest earned that's your interest expended right these are going to be your primary incomes and expenditures that come in uh, the other income for a bank is all the other income that comes in the form of commissions, right? Or in their investment banking division, or when you when you use an ATM, you end up paying a fee to the bank. That kind of a fee, 
so all sorts of fee income etc if you ask for a new checkbook there is a fee if you ask for a new debit card there is a fee all that comes under other income right so these are the three biggest headers for a bank you have interest income you have interest expended sometimes a and b are put together so a minus b which is interest earned minus interest expenses is something called as net interest income for a bank so sometimes bank just report net interest income straight away right and so that that is something that could come which is interest earned minus interest expended that is net interest income other income as we saw is commission etc and all other operating expenses come here in which you will get all the rents all the employee salary and so on and so forth right all these costs come under the operating expenses we see one more header which is called provisions and contingencies now banks give out loans loans these loans can turn into bad debts which means they do not come back banks have to by regulation provide for these what do we mean by provide for these every quarter some part of their profit mandatorily has to be put aside as provisions and contingencies against these bad debts these bad debts in the banking terminology are known as npa or non performing assets right these are assets that they have extended as loans to to other parties but these will not come back typically right rest of the stuff remains similar but in the context of a bank you typically do not have what is called as an operating profit that concept is not very very clear as to what is an operating profit does it have to be profit before provisions does it have to be profit after provisions that data point is not very very clear and hence uh, that becomes an important consideration when you're looking at banks as such right so that's the that's the difference when you look at a services firm versus a a manufacturing firm in terms of what kind of income statements they would have those are the primary differences as we have already seen in the case of infosys and in the case of uh, yes bank what could other services firms be hotel firms are services firms retail companies are services companies airline companies are services companies consulting firms are services companies right education firms are services companies tourism travel firms are services firms so in all these kind of cases you will see similar yardsticks where employee cost becomes the biggest cost usually and excess duty is not available right that's the key differentiation when you look at a services firm it is always good to know these differences because we we india is honestly a service driven economy most of our gdp comes from services uh, segment so it's useful to uh, understand because every other company we we'll evaluate will be a services firm right uh, you could add telecom to this list you could add media to this list right so you could add hospitals to this list all these are services firms they're not exactly the same as each other but uh, but they they are in the business of basically dishing out services right so that's your services firms that's when we kind of close this particular unit couple of quick questions what is the biggest cost for a services firm like infosys and state any two differences seen between services and manufacturing firms income statements thank you